part of this end of the track. Um, as you know, we are going to talk about sexual and consumers engagement for any communities. Um, my name is Angelica, by the way. I'm from Gaza, which is uh, a company that will also present an uh, annual credit here uh, of engagement. Um, and for this uh, session, we have six presentations of credits that we have seen already during the morning or yesterday in other sessions or today. And I thought uh, right now the focus will be on engagement, right? Um, so we have at the beginning for our coffee break uh credits communitas, Estia, Lightness, and React. My apologies in advance that I if I mispronounce some names. And after the proper break, we will we have the school and Luis in order to have time for questions on the round table that I think will be interesting because it seems to be sort of <coughs> uh, provocative topic. I don't know. So we'll see. Uh, just for our presenters, here is the camera uh, where we are. The, where the, the presentations are seen online, so just have that in mind. They will be in your bag, so have, that, have this in mind. And if you have, there will be four presentations at the beginning, but if you have questions, please write it down or ask. Uh, likewise, yeah, I would say the same to the people that is on the internet, please write your questions. Uh, and I will present, I will just, let's just start. I will introduce each presenter uh, when they, for each project. So we're starting to meet us with Felipe Neres. I hope I say it. So Philip has worked and has been working on a few hundred projects for the last six years and uh, hundreds of energy efficiency uh, in buildings. And since uh, 2019, he started to research about energy communities. He's currently coordinating the community's projects. So. This is an um, option. You may have it or not. How are you? Feel comfortable? Yes. Online. Where can I change the size? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. You can change it here. This one. Or the. Yes. Okay. So, there you have it. Okay, so uh, good afternoon everyone, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm sorry, there's no video. Okay. Yes, yes. It says it is for plastic. What? It says it is... Right. Okay. Challenge to talk to you today about uh, citizen and consumer engagement, but I'll try to do my best. Um, so, um, about the uh, motivation about this project and how we start. Um, there are several energy markets uh, that currently the big companies participate. Uh, we have in this slide uh, some examples of those markets the spot market, intraday market, etc. But all these markets have one thing in common which is that they are inaccessible to consumers. Why? Uh, there are several reasons why. They are very complex markets, uh, they have regulatory requirements, they have uh, minimum transaction volumes. All these are barriers to individual consumers to participate in these markets. So this was uh, the main motivation, I would say, for our project. Uh, and um, we saw here the potential of energy communities as a way to unlock the access to these markets. So we see that energy communities have the potential to aggregate people, uh, and by that having this additional empowerment and the participation of the citizen in different energy markets. Uh, and then, of course, there are other benefits associated with the communities that we have talked of throughout the morning as well, uh, benefiting the local economy, uh, the environmental economic benefits that we have 
from producing uh, renewable energy uh, and other benefits. So uh, basically we merge these two things, we merge the importance or the role of energy communities in the, this, uh, um, uh, this uh, um, way to get into different energy markets and we come up with this uh, project uh, called Communitas, so which has these two main goals. On one hand, we are trying to create and grow the energy communities across Europe, but on the other hand, we are trying to provide tools that make citizens active participants in this type of energy markets. And the project has these three main pillars, so I'll not present the work package structure, I know that you all know how these projects work, and you know the typical work package structure, but basically we, we have one work package dedicated to each one of these pillars, and I'll try to focus a bit more on the social engagement and innovation, because this is the core of today's presentation. Uh, about the, some general information about the project. Um, we, have, we are 18 partners from eight different countries. Uh, EDP, which is my company, the uh, utility from Portugal, we are coordinating. The project started just in January, so we are just with six months of project, it's very recent. Uh, and uh, it will run for three and a half years. We have a budget of seven million, grant of six million, and you can see there more or less the distribution of the partners. You can also see here, I'll go briefly to, to our demonstration sites. We have eight demonstration sites. Uh, some are more relevant than others. We divide this uh, by here, more or less. We have had one presentation at least in the morning that had the, the same concept of having pilots in different years. Uh, and the, the idea for this is that we want to support the energy communities that are already established to enter energy markets, the ones that still are being established, we want to support in that process, and then we want to replicate. So this is the logic behind these uh, three types of pilots. And these are some photos uh, on your left. Uh, there are some photos of our uh, leader, demo pilots, which are in Groningen, in the Netherlands. Uh, the second one is uh, in Piero, it's near Tarempo in Italy. And the last one is Krevinen, uh, which is the entire of the A bit about this uh, social engagement uh, and innovation pillar of the project. Uh, so what, what are we doing and what will we do uh, throughout the project? So this is uh, something that we have started already doing and is something that will continue to do throughout the whole project, which is this development of value-based propositions in energy community. And if you are like me, uh, that are not social scientists, and I'm sorry for everyone that is social scientists here, you are you probably are not completely sure what are these value-based propositions. Uh, but I'll try to briefly explain. So this is uh, something that we'll do to evaluate social sciences and humanities perspective um, in the citizens. So basically, we want to assess. Uh, the psychological perspective, the sociological perspective of the citizens to the topics of energy communities and energy markets. We want to understand the drivers, the needs, uh, what they think about the usefulness of certain tools. So this is what we mean by these value-based propositions. Uh, to do this, we'll have several methods, of course. We can do this via workshops, we are just observation, observing how the community works uh, on their day-to-day -day basis. We can do interviews, we can do questionnaires. There are several ways that we can do this. But by now, like I said at the beginning, we are just starting the project. So we were only able, only, uh, it's, I think it's a, a good outcome already in six months, but we have done already eight workshops with the different communities uh, where we gathered Fantastic insights, it's very good. Uh, we always have this engineering mindset, so it's good to talk with citizens and sometimes they say some, some things that we were not really, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I was not thinking on that exact way, but it's good to have this opinion from the citizens and we thought that it would be fundamental to have this from the start. So I was remembering in the morning someone asked, uh, to, to one of the speakers, if you have to, if you had to write your proposal again, when you would start engagement with the citizens, and I don't know if the person is still in this room. I think not. 
But uh, I, I guess my answer would be from day one, which is how we uh, wrote the proposal basically is to start engagement from day one. Um, and I, I'm going to just uh, take a, a quick break here from the slides just to, to tell a, a story that I found funny. Uh, yes, I'm not a social scientist. Uh, the first interactions we had with the partners that are social scientists, uh, they were like, uh, they were explaining to me the importance of using these different methods for engagement with citizens, uh, not only workshops, and they said something to me um, that, that made, made a lot of sense, uh, which is, uh, if we do just workshops, we'll always have the same profile of people, because the same profile of people go to do workshops. And these partners, uh, they even gave me the, the profile of this person. They said it was the elderly, rich, white male. They said that it's the typical person that goes to these types of workshops. So if we want to engage uh, and have diversity and engage all people, we need to have different uh, uh, methods of engaging with people. And these partners, uh, our partners, uh, which is a, a Dutch company, it's a big research center, you probably know about, you know. Um, they, they explained to me some of the strategies that they have implemented. And for example, one very two, uh, I'll share two with you that I found particularly interesting. One is that they went to this sort of street food van uh, where they had the, the coffee and cookies, and they went into this social neighborhood and they would invite people to come and have a, pop, a coffee and eat a cookie. And while the person was having a coffee and eating a cookie, they were asking the, the people about the energy communities, about energy, how they would interact, if they are interested or not. So this was their method for engagement. Another method I, I found particularly interesting was that they organized a dinner, uh, again, in a social neighborhood. They invited everyone to the dinner. And they had paper towels on the, on the table, and they gave, besides the, the food, they gave one pen to each person. And the idea was that while people were eating, uh, they were talking about these topics. And people, when they have any idea, they would write on the paper towel. And then at the end, what they did is they cut all the writing from all the people, and they merged it together, and they got the insights from all the people that went to that dinner, which I, I found particularly interesting. Going back to Communitas project and what we are doing, hopefully we'll do some fun things like this in the future, but we haven't still got the time to do it. So uh, other things that we are doing, we'll have these participatory labs. You probably know it's very common uh, in the projects now to have this type of participatory labs. It's a space where we'll try to gather citizens to uh, react to our developments and say if it's aligned with what with what they were thinking, if it's useful, if it's not useful, is something that will start in 2023 only. Uh, then we have the Replication Academy. So here is uh, something that we want to do with partners outside uh, the consortium, but mostly we want to go to some uh, meet some other people that are interested in forming energy communities but don't know how to because this is a, a very common reaction that we have. It's like, I'm very interested in this topic, but I, I have no idea how to start. Uh, so this Replication Academy is exactly this. So once we are uh, further ahead in the project and we have some guidelines, we could have these sessions, which should be a session where we can guide people what are the steps that you need to take to start your own energy. And finally, uh, this is the, the last thing we have for here to highlight on the social uh, aspect is these social acceptance campaigns, which we will learn uh, at the end of the project again. And basically, is to try to again try to see if our solutions are accepted in the different demo sites, etc. Uh, going over to the technical tools, and I know it's not the main topic for here, so I'll go very briefly over the technical tools now. Uh, Again, uh, as I mentioned, this project is, uh, aims to give people a way to participate in these energy markets, different energy markets, and also to boost and uh, grow the energy community. So we have will develop a, a set of tools that enable us to reach these two goals. Uh, and we'll have a tool for planning and investment analysis. We'll have another tool, which is a, a community manager. Uh, so it's a, a software where you can see statistics, consumptions, productions, etc., to manage the community. 
we'll have something uh, is a, a local test of one of the pilots on demand response and energy optimization. We'll have the peer-to-peer -peer training. Interesting because I, I think in the morning almost every speaker spoke about peer-to-peer. -peer. I think it's a very trendy, trendy topic. And I, I, I remember some people said that it's not feasible yet, but I, I disagree with this. I think it's feasible in some countries. Uh, and uh, at least in Portugal, we have a regulatory sandbox that we are working on that we can implement peer to peer. If you are interested, I can talk to you after and I can explain exactly how we'll do it. But we can implement it and not behind the meter because a lot of people talk about peer to peer, but behind the meter where you don't have to answer to the DSO. But there's, a, there's ways to do it also not behind the meter. Uh, then we have this warranties of origin marketplace, so capitalizing of, on this concept of granular warranties of origin. So as you know, uh, warranties of origin have a minimum volume of transaction, and individual consumers can never reach those minimum volume, volume. So the idea here is capitalizing on energy communities together with this uh, group of citizens, this production, and then uh, to being able to participate in the warranty of origin. Going to the last pillar, uh, which is financial, regulatory, and administrative support. I just have here two highlights. Uh, one is our knowledge base. Uh, so one, one of the things that we want to do and is very similar uh, to the Beckham project, like Beckham, right? Um, I don't know if I'm mispronouncing the name of the project, but also we want to do something similar. So we want to connect to different resources that already exist on energy communities. So there are many resources, but still in our workshops, people know what they tell us that they have no idea how to start. And there are some resources already that tell you step by step what you should do, that provide you some tools. So what we want to do here is to gather this information in one spot and give this information to the citizens so that they are aware how to do this. And then uh, we'll also have, of course, this uh, guidelines and policy recommendations that will be more towards the end of the project. This is very important, more for the Commission sometimes uh, to have this policy recommendation. But we have a very good relation also with national regulators, uh, and we have people that are experts in policy. So I think we'll, we'll get uh, some interesting outputs at the end of the project. And uh, that's it for me. I invite you only to follow our LinkedIn page. So this part of engagement is very important. Is very important. So feel free to go to our LinkedIn uh, and follow us and follow our updates. And uh, thank you very much. are very different, very diverse, in the sense that they are working to build new energy communities, but they are other colleagues uh, that are working on energy communities already constituted, they constituted. So, and also they are different in the sense that they are at different stages of their project cycle, so it would be interesting as well as well to see how they are addressing now these projects and how the experience of those projects that are already, that are uh, completing or are completed already, uh, how they have others uh, these issues, right? So, I want to introduce now IOGP, I have to say, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, even mentioned it, uh, this uh, anecdote about diversity in workshops, but we're going to see about diversity and more now. So, IOGP is a postdoctoral research and architect, currently working on sustainability transition projects, using a practice theory oriented and participatory approach, and she's leading the game engagement package of the SDA. Right, so yeah. Yeah. if you talk about some yeah. okay. for the, for the <laughs> yeah, so good afternoon, I'm Lady. So I'm gonna take you through some of the work I'm doing with the SDR project. Um, and then although uh, the session is about engagement, I'm gonna zoom into specific aspects of the engagement process, which I thought is important to pick out. So um and, oh no. It's not the same as yesterday, my, yeah. I think my, uh, 
So if you want me to clean it for you while you speak, as we did yesterday. Yeah, thanks, Carmen. <laughs> I think, yeah, that is a new thing we discovered yesterday, that some fonts... Yeah, it it was <laughs> some fonts are being painted by... Uh, yeah. Anyway, that was just a slide on myself. I just said I can find it. But well, that is, uh, I, I, um, my background is in architecture and work in practice. Uh, communities a lot, but also now turned into a researcher in <coughs> the sections of social science uh, with participatory methodologies and design. So uh, in this project, uh, we have designed a participatory creation uh, process that has been presented. So we, we want uh, citizens, we have three pilot sites that we've introduced. And uh, while, while we've been doing this, we've um, kind of encountered issues that we did not uh, actually uh, not necessarily so aware of in the beginning. And gender is a big aspect of this. Isn't that for the presentation? That's yes, it's for the presentation. Oh my god! So do we say that we use Adia or if I name a Roman? Can I start with this? But can I do any of the apps? Any single one. Yeah, because it's all one by one. So, let's see. Is anyone here with way of how? So I can I can start introducing you to our pilot sites and to just to build the profiles. While this has been done, it was great. So we have three sites: uh, one in Sardinia, in Italy, on the mountains in Unity, in Bohemia. Uh, we have a, a pilot in Fort in the Netherlands, which is close to Amsterdam, and we have another pilot in commu community in France, in Camus Claudel. And all these communities are actually uh, completely different profiles. And in the beginning, you know, we don't realize how much this would make actually a difference to the way that we design strategy for engaging people. So in Fort House on the left, we have uh, half of our community is a senior community. So there were people that bought, these are all a community built new with smart homes. So people moved into these homes to have better, you know, efficiency and accessibility and kind of live more comfortably and in older age. Uh, but also we have a part of the community which are families with young kids. In Italy, in, in uh, Sardinia, we have a very uh, mixed picture. We have older houses, these are not smart homes, these are the places that they are in the process of generating and becoming an energy community, but we have all sorts of different house types, but also a lot of people in the generational families with you know people living close with you know the grandparents in one floor and then the kids and the grandchildren. So there's a different uh, arrangement of everyday life. And then in France, uh, we have a student community, but also families with young children. So in, in the beginning, and part of our process was that we wanted to explore to understand what are the dynamics of this community in order to actually uh, help us design the platform. And very early, we realized that this solution cannot be a one size fits all because of the um, the difference in, in that. Next we think we can, yeah, maybe go. Yeah. So today, as I said, I'm going to focus specifically and zoom in into this idea of how what we call the energy housekeeping or the engagement with the energy technologies in the home um, have caused uh, are shaped by issues of life stage, age, and gender, but also what is the implication not just in the home but in the community. Yeah. Yeah. So when we started looking into homes, we realized that although we want to design a platform, maybe one more click. Yeah. As I said, homes and communities are not homogeneous units. So they comprise of individuals, but also of practices. And our main focus was not to actually identify individuals or their profiles. It's often used in the for example, in technology development, where people have specific profiles, but we wanted to focus instead on what people do and why they do it. So take a different perspective. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that maybe one more because I talked about this. Yeah. So some of the things that we early on understood is that the people who control and manage those energy technologies in our case are not the same people who perform the everyday tasks at all. So. Who have this uh, 
interface, it would be a mobile application or something else that they have in the home. But actually, it wouldn't be the same. So, you know, there will be in some cases in the mountains in Bratina, for example, that the grandmother of the house would perform the laundry while people were, the kids were at work, but she would not be the person that received the notification about when is the good time to wash or all these things. So we realized early on that age, gender, and other sort of characteristics shape people's engagement with technology. And since, as a background, the home is still one of the most gendered spaces of our society, despite things evening out slowly, however, there is still a kind of, uh, let's say, we, we don't still know a lot what's happening with this idea of distribution of labor when digital technologies enter the home. Because they, uh, the, the issue with that is that um, it requires a lot of negotiation between household members. And as I already said, some senior, uh, particularly senior women in Burkina, um, you know, did not at all have any interaction with these smart applications or smart technologies, but they were the ones performing the task. So it was important for us to understand how we can actually uh, promote communication between people if they're not going to use the technology, but also how to make these technologies themselves not energy neutral, but energy sensitive, and understand what are the specific things that need to be involved in the design. Um, and coming back to this issue of technologies, um, again, we know from research, but also from looking into our pilots, that uh, technologies are not designed with a neutral profile. And often what we see is that technologies have this user who is well-educated, maybe, you know, uh, you know, well-informed and often male that operates this technology. So they're designed with this sort of certain user. However, this creates inequalities or challenges when they come into the home. Um, so this, there is already a term which is called resource mark, which is the idea of the user of uh, energy technology. Um, and then uh, what we observe, for example, in our pilots, we, we try to understand what are these different practices that people perform, sort of what, what are the interactions with technology. So what we saw is people kind of control and manage their batteries or the photovoltaics, they coordinate the settings and, you know, paying the bills. So these are the kind of, let's say, physical practices. But also, we realize that there's a lot of aspects that are more invisible, so the cognitive aspects, and this relates to the mental load. So this is anticipating if something is not is going to go wrong, and if it goes wrong, how do we fix it? Coordinate the settings along with other events. If we're going on holiday, do we need to change? Do we need to remember to switch on things or off? And then coordinate the whole energy and digital housekeeping with everyday kind of uh, household jobs. And so, we came to see that a lot of the physical tasks of this energy housekeeping were performed by men, although women did have a big part in some of it. However, the visible physical tasks of checking, you know, the photovoltaics and the batteries were more performed by men, whereas women uh, kind of had a more experiential understanding of flexibility. They knew how to make the home flexible. They knew, they knew that if I need to change the times that we wash something, how is everything else going to be affected? So it's like a domino effect. So women are very good at understanding in our pilots this potential for flexibility. However, they did not perform all the physical tasks of the energy housekeeping. So therefore, the women carried a heavier mental load in that coordination. And although they did not perform the task, they still had to oversee how things are coordinated. Um, then we also started looking into issues of age and sort of life states. And what we saw is we, we, we were very distinct household typologies that emerged. So we had senior citizens or retired people. And they, their potential for flexibility, for example, in the energy community was great because they had more time and they had more patience and they could sit there and engage with the idea that, oh, it doesn't matter for us if we move something along the day or not. However, they had more challenges with engaging with the technology themselves, whereas families that had very tight schedules, they could not very easily kind of move things around. So their potential for being flexible was much more limited. Um, so it's, as I said, the issues that came out is that this, because of the, the whole 
barrier to technology and coming into the home, a lot of uh, citizen groups have difficulty making them practical, uh, adopting into their homes. So, as I said in the beginning, we've, we've had a participatory strategy and, you know, as expected, we did have a lot of workshops. We are in the final year, so a lot of this have happened, but we're still doing interactions. Uh, we have uh, also, aside from the participatory, the initial workshops to map the communities and, and to get them to be part of the design of the platform, we, only, we also, after identifying issues of gender and different other aspects, we, we did targeted focus groups. So we did women only uh, focus group. We also did a lot of home tours in which people could take us around their home and show us how they work. And this has actually helped us to, like Philip said, it's different perspectives of how we can engage different people at different times and uh, to get a different quality and quantity of information. What we understood then in the whole process is that people need to be involved not only in the solution of problems, but actually in the identification of the definition of the problem. So in this case, in energy communities, if you introduce a platform for, for example, demand response, it's, it's important to understand what are the issues that shape that in the home and then collectively in the community. Um, uh, other things is that there are <coughs> a lot of cultural and social norms, but also gender roles, and these are different in this community. So we need to understand what these are, but often technologies, rather than help smooth things out, they might exaggerate things. So they might actually push people more to the stereotypical roles, which we also observed in some of the pilots. So that's the, the danger, and we need to make sure that we offer opportunities for people to test and try and, and go out of their comfort zone. Uh, the other thing we observed is that the idea of leadership or role models in the energy communities is yet needs to have more diversity and to also especially promote more women into uh, taking a step and be more visible in energy communities in how they can actually lead things or perform roles that are not necessarily doing at the moment. Uh, so we need to sort of reinforce that. Um, and then, yeah. All of this leads to the idea that a participatory and inclusive engagement is important. However, it's tricky sometimes because um, so we pay sometimes too much attention to the consensus or to the kind of variety of things and how they agree. However, we forgot the fringes. We, we forget like that it's important to look at the edges and to understand what the, the kind of particularities of communities should be. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for getting us in the microphone. Um, we are moving from knowing the engagement activities from uh, the control from the Quintus project to now uh, this uh, gender and age uh, focus or life stage focus from Estia. Who was moving from uh, to project uh, Linus, Linus project, which is the next one. This is not only about uh, the presentation and the presentation on engagement, we not only about uh, engaging people around tools, but actually about building communities for the building uh, the whole concept of the Working on engaging communities for the building of the European energy community. So, what it will be better explained by Gonzalo, which is uh, also from Gaza, I work with him. So, uh, he's a social and environmental consultant, expert with policies related to climate change and social transformation, founder of Gaza as well, with experience in public and private consultancy, research in and innovation in neighborhoods and cities in Europe, Latin America, and Africa. Uh, he has coordinated uh, several studies and participatory processes and political transition and social change. And some of his recent works are around issues such as climate of energy, including energy communities, and environmental policies and local parts of the political organs. So, so uh, thank you. Uh, if we don't need these, maybe I can. No. Okay. Um, Okay, thank you, uh, thank you to everyone. Um, I like to uh, try to build upon what 
colleagues that said I was taking notes and I think uh, it was very, very interesting uh, the perspective that you have introduced and I will try to use our experience in the Leidens project, another European project uh, focused on energy communities to see what how we are trying to learn these uh, concepts in, in this case. I will talk about the project, but then I will focus on one of the pilot uh, sites we are working on in a municipality in the Madrid region. Uh, then I will try to introduce the role of the local government, because that is what is more interesting from experience uh, in, the, in this uh, pilot. And then some opportunities and limits that we are uh, tackling, some, some difficulties that we are uh, experiencing and what we can learn from, from that. Well, first of all, um, <coughs> well, I, I had there like, uh, some of the definitions of the, of the project and everything, but as you all know, more or less, uh, what I'm talking about and my colleagues already talked about the energy communities, I will try to say that uh, the framework for us is to see that uh, the energy transition can be just a matter of uh, sustainability, environmental sustainability, and just an energy transition, but not a just transition without fairness, and this is uh, completely connected to the, the, the experiences that you have described and introduced in your presentations. And this is very important because energy communities, though the framework is not landed in each territory uh, for now or completely long, um, there is a gap where we can uh, play a little uh, role in this sense, trying to combine those uh, both uh, perspectives. Um, so, um, the Linus project is working in these four uh, topics, uh, sustainability, social justice, uh, autonomy, in terms of uh, how people can organize themselves to uh, participate, uh, participate in, the, in the energy system, and then uh, local development. Um, but we are doing so working uh, through four working areas or, or work packages, social engagement. Uh, Angelica and me are working mainly in this, uh, in this dimension. Uh, the technological package, business models, and the, and the roadmap. Um, the countries where we are working on, in terms of the pilot sites, uh, we have one in, in Poland, two in the Netherlands, uh, also in Italy, and then two in Spain. And the one in Spain I will talk about is in Manzanares del Real, a municipality of 9,000 uh, people in the north of Madrid region. Um, we are dealing with uh, public buildings, with uh, families in uh, uh, energy poverty situation, and also uh, a group of neighbors that uh, created an association which is the core of the uh, energy community. Uh, it is very important that the, from the very beginning that the local government was there promoting the project. We are working in different energy communities pro uh, projects, and sometimes it's a matter of a really uh, bottom up uh, perspective, or this is something that was uh, framed in the beginning by the municipality. So we are also talking about public policies relating, regarding uh, energy uh, transition. So the phases we are uh, working on, uh, the first one we call it the seed community um, and was uh, about uh, creating an energy office to offer uh, direct advice to citizens, like host households, uh, individuals that come for the information, um, then an, a PV installation uh, in the sport on the, on the rooftop of the sports center, and then uh, a process, uh, participatory process with the um, school, where the, the, the educational community uh, are they are um, assessing the energy situation of their building and their uh, behaviors. Uh, they all work together also, they are connected into a single project which is Manza Energia, Manza from the name of the village and Energia Energy. 
So um, from the seed community, we are now uh, trying to start or actually already starting the, the second phase, the tree community, uh, with the association that is already working. Uh, the PV bank is already, already working as well. So uh, energy exchange uh, is uh, uh, settled and started. And we plan to start the third phase, the forest community uh, soon enough. So um, just very quickly, because we have infrastructures, we have technologies, but the thing is that it is not only, though I was very, uh, uh, I agree with, with uh, you in the last presentation uh, about the perspective of those technologies, but it is not only about which adaptation we manage to have on the technologies as tools, it is also about the objective and those things that are beyond technologies. Uh, so we have this uh, complex system where we have the, the PV panels, the network, uh, the batteries, uh, the families receiving the, the energy, the school, everything. But we also have uh, agreements that the um, mayor have to sign with the group of people, with the, with the neighbors to give them the energy of the solar panels because the solar panels are not owned by the community for now and this is in the first place and this is a complex process a negotiation process that is very interesting interesting um, how do we do this of course well, qualitative research uh, workshops uh, uh, they are little by little stepping forward as the municipality steps back and I can talk about the energy party we created with almost 200 people in the village participating, about uh, the expectations, analysis, uh, collective analysis that we do, uh, the, the works, energy works, uh, a lot of workshops. Uh, it was fantastic. But it is also important that the municipality, though, they step back little by little to give space to the community to do. To, to be alive, it also, it also has uh, some responsibility in terms of the framework and the public policies that have to be there. So the uh, experience of the energy community is not alone. It needs to be connected to other experiences and other uh, public local policies. So, uh, well, I, we cannot see the video that we brought from the energy party, but we, you can watch it on the, the website which is uh, manzanarasreal.com or something like that. I can write it for you later. Um, but uh, I have, I, I'm very happy because now the community is starting to look for financing on their own. They're uh, stepping forward. They are also uh, working with the municipality still to understand how to deal with uh, energy poverty because a priority was given to uh, be part of the community, to families in this uh, situation. Though in Spain, at least, we don't know what poverty, energy poverty is. It is something that many researchers are working on, but actually there is no uh, like a studies or agreed definition about it. So we have to work together with social services to uh, see how can we establish this priority for the families to obtain the. Uh, fair price uh, uh, energy and um, well just uh, with uh, opportunities and, and limits I, I have to say that there, those, those limits are not just in terms of energy or technologies as Kevin Lynch uh, explored in his uh, book Energy and Equity and sometimes those who move really fast or consume a lot of energy are also um, working against those who uh, move slow or consume less energy, not in terms just of energy consumption, but also in terms of use of the space and relationships that are established among uh, participants and people living in cities and villages. So a lot of limits. Um, to work on for the next project or the next research, but uh, we had some uh, clues, some ideas uh, regarding the possibility to replicate this 
uh, and how uh, the resources are also limited uh, in terms of the space, how much energy can be installed in the village locally, uh, but also in terms of um, how much time do people have and how much money can, can be implemented. It's uh, just the local responsibility, how we involve the regional government in this. So that's it. Uh, I, I prefer to uh, give some space to the debate, if, if, if possible, or the questions, and we go on. Uh, now we're going to see the React project with Fausto. Fausto uh, is uh, interested, uh, he's interested, sir. Has been finalized his work as a lecturer, researcher, and project manager at Comet, working right now. He's currently dedicated main project management, UX, and ethical audit. In the last couple of years, he has been interested and highly involved in exploring mechanisms and strategies that can help in shaping perception that perception and acceptance that society in general and people individually have in renewable energies and energy communities. So Hi, good afternoon, and um, I'm going to present your stats from React. React finishing at the end of the month, so in the sense, this project has lots of results, and um, you can see the, the, the website later on where you can download all information on the data set as we start there. So, I'm going to briefly introduce the, the motivation for the project. Uh, it's basically three, three pillars is the energy cost of a run. With the, in these islands, you have considered that the three islands are in the project are more islands, that all islands are fully dependent on the, on the mainland, and like the mainland is another island. Or, or fully dependent on, on uh, uh, petrol, basically. So they have this condition, they have the, we have to consider the loss of energy and green transport. As I say, the free consumption, because uh, there is a lack of energy generation in these small fire islands. And also, we have to consider the viral uh, load profile. The three, these three fire islands uh, are highly, they change highly during the season. So the population multiplies in some cases by 10 because all three islands are very touristy. Like I said, has not much accommodation for tourists, but the other two, which is uh, in Lismore and uh, Ancarlo Port San Pietro, are, are quite, uh, quite touristy. So, and all three islands one is in both Atlantic, one is in Ireland, one is in uh, Spain, and one is in the Mediterranean. So they are quite, quite different. So we need to change the, the the leverage of, of inland renewable energy sources to develop more sustainable energy models. That was the motivation for the work project when it was written a uh, few years back. These are, I'm going to do a quick presentation of the project. So the, the, the three islands is La Graciosa, San Pietro, and Ireland. As I say, they are quite different, and um, La Graciosa has a small population. We only have 22 what well, we've selected. And this is, this is going to come with the engagement issue later on. Uh, we have problems in our society getting uh, participants. They were very reluctant because our previous bad experience was not really a problem. And they were, and someone talked about trust, and trust is very important. Uh, and this had trust, the trust issue comes from the very beginning, even before. In any case, in our society, it was obvious. The, bad, the previous bad experience. We don't need that position, so we need, we need this to find a way to grow and take your other children. So the idea was to demonstrate the potential of large scale development of rest, but also we also wanted to have the islands defined as a test bed for scaling up the solution. Okay. So and now I go to the engagement. This is a tool, so I'm going to talk about the engagement and the engagement, and also I'll talk about what is the perception people have and the probability about their own knowledge on energy markets, and its communities, the market responses, etc. So when we tried to get participants for the three pilot islands, in the case of Aran Island, the skinny small, it was relatively easy. Why? Why? Do you know why? Good boy. 
That is closely related to the sense of community, the core value. There is a very good close community. The same happens in Agrathesa, but in Agrathesa, the amount of foreigners is huge. So these big seven hundred is like Agrathesa. They are a very close community, but it's not as close as in Arabinismo. But also, the fact that they've been used already to two previous points, at least I know this response and the effect. So they have experience and they have positive experience with these two previous. In the case of Gramaciosa, we needed to find a solution. So we thought, we need to find a peer. We did our social research. So we found to find a peer which is trusted. So the community trusts this person and we can get a message through this person. And who was this person? You have to be in case of It was a man. It's a female woman. And she was convinced of the project, and she said, Okay, I will participate. We did, as some of you presented before, things in the street. We organized uh, informative meetings because there was not always convinced them, because only the people of the marriage, it was not so. The, the project people, the, the theory the people of the project were there, explained in common language, this has been mentioned before, what we're going to do. Because if you don't explain in common language, they can lose. They don't care about kilowatts, they don't care about megawatts, so you know, you just need facts, simple facts to get into it. So once we use the air as a pivotal point, we managed to get from zero to 22. <laughs> it was very important. In California, it was different because for some reason, which I don't, uh, don't still understand very well, we got like over 30 hospitals. But some of these dwellings, are second residents. And that includes an anom anomaly in the data, obviously, because all the data from construction is going to be extremely different because it's a second house that you only use every few months or every few weeks. This is a, a challenge for the demand of sport and energy storage, etc. Et okay. Other problems we have technical problems, which are interesting, is a uh, before meddling with the installations. Meddling means touching some of the part, some of the stuff, the, the, the installation, or disconnecting some of them. So back to engagement. And this is, I'm not saying, this is important because the, the, the technology also can somehow improve the tendency to use new technology. So if you have easy to use technology, that can work in favor of your proposed solution. So, we didn't have the technology. The money was there, we were investing, but we didn't have the application ready. So, we couldn't have solved all of this. And you are going to be very happy with this application because you can control it from home. You will be able to control your appliances from home, or you will be able to at least see how the construction and the self construction uh, generation of, the, uh, of energy is. So, after all of this, we decided to use several. This is the engagement we tried we try to use and we use during the project. So, at the beginning, we use informative sessions, as I mentioned, to try to get people into the project. The other informative sessions we did afterwards in all three pilots, because this has been done with the whole project, were just for the general public to show the good results we are having slowly, slowly coming. Yeah? So then we have face to face meetings. In these small communities, that's easy. In bigger communities, that's not so easy. We have to remember also we have a pandemic. So we have no choice, but sometimes you have to be with all type of content. And then we try to use the social media, which in my opinion has been, uh, how can I say that? Social media has been, uh, <laughs> social media has been given too much importance. And especially in, uh, in our experience in this small community, social media, I mean, some of them didn't even want to use the Facebook. They say, okay, we do have a WhatsApp, WhatsApp uh, group. So we use those. We try to use everything, translate into three language, four words, four languages, Spanish, Italian, Gaelic, and English. So we try to get them into not just those who were already in the project, but those who were outside. 
So if you we present you the, the, the information not in English, in your language, we hope that we get more important. The question is, I've been attending the bridge meetings and how can you really measure that? Because you can say, and this is the same way I will to show you some stuff now. You can report yourself as over oh, I know a lot of the months of it, so we, but we are not we are not going to interrogate them. So one thing is what they say they want, one thing is what they say they like, etc. And one thing is reality. And this happens in every you know, everywhere. So the objectives of a research project was we also wanted to find out about what they as I said, what did they know about the man response, the new community, recovery energies, and user satisfaction with the technology provider. So of course this last point could only be done once they have the technology in their hands. And that was the application that we did the developing. The application, as I said, it was at the beginning on informative. And for that you have to have the application. Not just one week, but there is a sensible period of time, so you can use it and have a more or less a informed uh, opinion about what you're doing. So, to do this, to do this, we do the interviews at the beginning. At the beginning, one of the techniques you mentioned that there was several social techniques and social research for the group. Of course, we have planned very nicely in the proposal, we're going to do these focus groups, blah, 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 and then one day it hits. So the focus group is off, or off. So this will replace with telephone calls, which is not the same as a focus group. But the focus group is something they have different. And then at the end, what we did, we tried to figure out whether the perception of knowledge was the same, but you see the time, which is a standard, it's a technology center model, which is a very standard well known uh, tool, and the SBS, which is uh, Another tool which is what we started with the, the, the system disability score. So, the results of the interviews showed that uh, most participants didn't know the demand response. This was already, the, the interviews, remember, they were at the beginning of the process, okay? They were at the beginning of the month 16 or trash and rest. And except in some people, they said they self report, and this is one thing is what you self-report on this video that you have, they did not have the man response. And they don't this. And they also started they wanted to learn more. All received themselves about knowing about energy savings, but not about energy management and exploration. Okay, energy savings, but you have said that, what they are basically thinking about is what can I do to save energy at home? And sometimes also at work, at work. But when you tell them about any management, of course, if you don't have any management tool, you don't know, you don't, you don't know anything about that. And the same happened with the storage. Some people knew what the battery was, but if you don't have any panels or anything that leads to the storage or can storage energy, uh, you don't need to know about that. And all, as I mentioned this morning, well concerned about energy prices, especially in more, well, they have as much in the community as I mentioned before. In some years, environmental protection and savings. Uh, both economic and energetic, because our positive factors are quite very closely related, were mentioned as the positive aspects of the technology we provided. <laughs> and like a few times, I mentioned, was very, very reluctant at the beginning to participate, and then those that participate were very happy. Why were they very happy? Because one of the things that I mentioned before is not just energy, the same of energy, but it was outages. So no energy cuts. So those participants that installed their, their react solutions, they didn't, they didn't care about anything, they didn't, they didn't have any energy cuts. And what happened is when the other people in the area realized that these people is not having the energy cuts are on, they come with the lunch, the fish come and work in, but now we have to wait until the, 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 the energy cuts comes back again. So these were more or less the results from the from the interview. The result, the result from the time. The time is a question to analyze the acceptance of a new technology to, to, to address that issue in this okay? So, the time in general showed a uh, positive attitude in all three islands. You can see that this is part of the, 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 the time is concerned for the time to get a research from, from, from for them. So, 
it explores all these four aspects, which is the usefulness, how useful you think the, 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 the technology is, the project. Okay? How easy to use. And then we have two other uh, aspects, which is the, the attitudes towards the use and the intention to use. Because it's not the same. You can have a very good attitude about it, but then you decide not to use it. There were minor differences in context, uh, but the Pokemon and Peter were the more the more optimistic about that was for the technology. The, and the participant from the were the responsibles. Still, as I said, they were uh, all there were no negative sensations of a technology installed. But this applies to the whole system. And then we did the system usability, and this only was applied to the application, the drug application. So again, most uh, they were positive about it, and uh, but we need, we found some it's not interesting because the um, for example, uh, again, some Pietro people were very optimistic about it, but it's more because they have previous experience with another tool, with another application, they were not so positive about the reaction. And the question here is, were the expectation far too high because they were not only expecting yes to get information because at the moment the application of the task is only provides information of any generation and consumption, or were there other issues regarding that? We could not explore that because it's a questionnaire and uh, only in some cases they make special comments about it. But this is something we need to know because uh, may maybe the reasons is uh, what, what, what can be the reasons, really. So um, we also did another study on ethical issues. All this is on the website, you can download the there are two more papers to come and leads from real reaction. This is into its time. So we have plenty of research to, to check it. So um, basically, this is the, the, the points from the ethical aspects. We double check for the documentation about this stakeholders. As we mentioned before, that maybe gender is uh, an age can modify or even constrict the perception of the technology, and that's happened. So it is important that all consumer profiles are presented in the, in the study of any, any project. Because uh, in, a, in the same space, you have completely different components, and those that uh, manage the energy could be quite different from those who are dependent in you know them. So I can, I, I'm, I'm at home. And I may think, you know, okay, I'm going to do all this housework. But the one who is managing or getting the information from the mobile application is actually the one who is at work at the moment. So this is, these are things that need to be taken into account. Okay? This is from the basic aspect. From the GPR, the private, uh, private complaints was, uh, was also something that most people are not aware. For example, if, you, if we need to get the previous data from the energy consumption, we need to sign. Agreement. Most people are not aware of the DDPR legislation. So you have to again to explain them in, in the um, plain language what this is about and why do you need that information. Simplify, simplify information and make them uh, feel better. Other uh, results from the political uh, research like in we need to stay alert from Possible standard changes that can affect the development of activity. So, for example, some participants or no participants might decide that a project or a new technology is not fit for them. And the reason could be a wrong one or a right one. And those are the reasons. They could be media, propaganda, political conflict, historical movements, etc. etc. So, this is something that we need to take into account because you might find some populations that, for whatever reason, are misinformed or overinformed or overinformed regarding the, the technology we are offering them. And again, the, the 
way through is simple language and clear explanations. And um, the other thing that I imagine what worry then is that the, the fact that um, the stakeholders in this kind of projects are very varied. So it's very important to find out that there is no mistreatment, there is no um, misconception of each other's role in the project, whether you are a DSO, whether you are a political figure, an analyst figure, etc. Et so these are concerns that happen with the with ethical issues. And basically this is it for me, because all the information there. So that's it. We still have two minutes, so we could go over the one or two questions. Do you have any here? I do, I do like to have. Do we have in the in the internet? Let's start with them. Okay, so this is uh, a question. We have two questions for the Lions project for Gonzalo and for Nikki. One is like for the next project, which social engagement activities have proved to be the most effective when it, when it comes to the relations, business models, and technology development? So, which uh, is about the engagement activities? Engagement activities. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, I was trying to say that. Uh, it is not only about the activities and the and the tools we use, but why we use them. Right? It is important to understand that the path matters in the energy transition. So I'm happy to talk about the techniques, which are a set of uh, social research, research and action research uh, techniques, techniques. But it is also important to have in mind that we use them for something and. Uh, the, every step matters, it's not only as, uh, as my colleague was saying uh, about the result, not even I think about the definition of the result, but about questioning if do we need apps for anything, do we need those technologies, what we do want to do with all, all this uh, transition, what are our role? So um, we use um, social research, um, interviews, a lot of listening because social research is what lacks in terms of questioning what we need and what we uh, want to do. These kind of projects um, very often are very quickly addressed to the results um, in terms of energy efficiency or energy uh, savings, but uh, we need to organize groups of people to participate in the energy sector. It's not that easy. So, uh, we have to ask ourselves in this kind of encounters, uh, meetings, where we debate, uh, workshops, uh, graphic facilitation, walks, uh, talking with uh, one to each other, groups in which uh, public administration is not present because we have to uh, deal with things that they will want, they want to be happy about, or companies and then do uh, groups and, and mix uh, conversations with, with every person and, and role participates, so a lot of different uh, activities. And I can uh, point out that the energy party was something that we made up that, that was very interesting because the, the participation was uh, a bit weak at some point in the process and we had to connect to other people, so we had this driver group, this uh, group that was really uh, compromised and involved from the very beginning, but through the energy party uh, it was more socialized and we had a lot of inputs and the project changed. The project was also open to change and to be surprised by other inputs that were not expected in the beginning. So this is a, a bit how, how it works. And we are a group of people with mixed uh, uh, energy and social researchers and environmental researchers also working together, but always with this public policy uh, focus in, in mind. Thanks.
So the question for Adeliki is about uh, to increase social acceptance and social inclusion in renewable energy communities, which social aspects should, should technology developers be aware of? Okay. Since this is for internet, so yeah, thank you. Uh, I think I will kind of move back to uh, the valid point. <laughs> I don't think there is a list right now that I can say this is that of course we have presented some uh, kind of general uh, factors like for example phase and life stages. But I think uh, as you would say from looking at from the social uh, research perspective is it depends. It depends on the community and it depends on what kind of technology you need to, uh, to design and to put into each of these communities. So the best thing to do is to ask people to, to understand what their everyday life is, to understand how their everyday routines are formed and what is easy and familiar to kind of include in this uh, very well balanced kind of activities. Because often we are not just living a life in a vacuum, we live in a society where it, ha it has specific rhythms. You know, we the schools work certain times, we work certain times, and we, there's things, the shops open at certain times. So when we ask people to do different things, we have to consider that it's not just an extra change or one little thing, but if they change one thing, there's this idea of domino effect. Everything might be affected. So I think it's 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 a very difficult thing to work together between developers of technologies and communities. However, um, the harder it is, the better it gets if, you, if there is a kind of, even if there are two things that you can actually generate from within the community rather than just an off-the-shelf ready-made solution. I can add something. I, I found what you just said very, very interesting. And I also wanted to point out that uh, maybe uh, there is an opportunity in this tech kind of projects to connect what is with what, what is already there, the challenges that they already have. So then we bring our aims and objectives, talking about climate change, why, why in terms of mitigation at least, is something far in space and far in time, far for their daily lives, for people living everyday life in, in, in a village or in a, in a city. So I think we have to listen and to connect with their own aims and needs. They already know what they need. So we come from outside, they, we tell them, no, you have to create an energy community. So uh, climate change will be OK in, in, in 100 years. It's not like that. We have to see that they have now problems and in every neighborhood. And it's really diverse, a lot of uh, from from age, uh, gender perspective, and many others. Children are participating in the project I presented. They are really main characters. They are playing a very important role because they are assessing what their reading and their uh, everyday work and, and day in, in their school uh, needs. So it's more about connecting with processes that are already happening and then adding something, uh, give some tools for something that may help or may give some other ideas or some, some change of perspective. Maybe it's more about the public uh, um, public uh, the, the, the regulators to change something because um, sometimes they tell us to work with the community but actually the change is about us learning something new and not asking them to learn. We, we arrive to sometimes advisors, uh, consultants to, to, a, to a place, and we want them, people to, to learn and to, to be teached by, taught by, by, by us, that that's not working. Maybe it's more those, the client who are hiring us uh, to, to do their research, or maybe us, ourselves, who have to change. And not always the people who don't know how to use an app. We create, maybe we created the need for the app, and it was it was we have another question, the last one for the coffee break. Um, I have to give a special thanks to Lai Soto, who is sending all these questions. So, uh, this last question for the copyright is for React, for Hosto. It is about, uh, it's a, a good point about different types of external risks. 
In your experience, Fausto, which ones have shown to be, sorry, which ones has shown to be the hardest to mitigate and why about external risks? The external risk basically is, like what I say, is bad press. Bad press bad and, and another very important one is lack of knowledge and ignorance of lack of information about the web. Because it's very difficult to overcome bad experiences. That's very difficult to change their mind. It was very difficult. And, to, and then you have to have a fight or a, you have to educate them about what you're going to do. So you have either first remove bad experiences, if that's the case, and then you have to inform them. So yeah, basically this is, this is the, the, the only. Also, I mean, the question with the regulation is very complex because nowadays in Spain, at least, which is in the case I know better, uh, they change the regulation because they change the fact that they don't know, people don't know, and this is why this advice, this company, these people that uh, present uh, kind of short or unclear uh, guidance on how to proceed is very important because they change the regulations. And if you have, have several layers of administrations, like it, this is the fact, for example, in Agrociosa, which is a, a small community in between another, but the spice people in other layers, there's like five layers. <laughs> so if one layer decided that the project or the installations are not good, because, for example, they are, it's a natural park itself, so the solar panels could not be seen from the floor. So in other places, you may not have such regulatory restrictions. So this is another external obstacle, which is, uh, I mean, it has been mentioned today already, uh, but this is, uh, is um, it's quite hidden actually. Thank you. Thanks. So it seems like we have the time for one more break, and we can come back uh, at 16 about the presentation. It's so about the engagement on Brits the school and uh, the risk and they have our round table so come back and uh, the same for the internet people and uh, well see you soon see you. In Cosmo Ernar Group, uh, he worked in the System Integration Renewables Department. And since 2010, he has, worked, has been working as business developer and project manager in the Control and Pretendian Systems Group at the University of Milan. In both medicine and healthcare and smart cities research plans. And he has participated in national projects, several European projects as a coordinator. And Technological transfer projects as well. So, this year, Okay, perfect. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Petit. First of all, I would like to say that today we were supposed to have here Joaquin Allende, that is the scientific <coughs> coordinator of the project. I am the coordination team, but I am not the, the scientific coordinator. I will try to do my best on this. And the second thing I would like to say is that probably I will break the rules and I will change a little bit the presentation of our movies. I will skip some of the slides. It's 4 o'clock in the afternoon and it's a uh, time, we are all tired and so on. So the presentation was really maybe a little bit wider than cities engagement. So I will try to skip those parts that are uh, out of that. Okay? So, so this is the data sheet for, uh, for the project, RESCUL, it's the strategies and tools for incentivization and management of the 
resilient in energy communities for distributed resources. Our sister projects in the same topic are doing tasks that uh, Philip has explained before. We have masterpieces that are making the presentation during the morning. Okay. We are 16 partners in the consortium from seven different countries, which is especially good first because in the topic we have different files of different social democratic parts across Europe. And it's uh, three years and a half project. I think that is in I would have liked to come, or I will come back here in two years' time because we are just as starting now, we are in mode six. So we didn't know how to cope with the presentation because at the moment we are just simply starting, setting the basis for the project. And this is why the presentation has been prepared across the use cases that are being defined in this, in this month. Okay? So, uh, well, these are the partners. I will not go through, go through them, but a relevant thing is that they are really heterogeneous consortium. I mean, until a few years ago, we were really used to have a lot of the parts, pilots, and so on. Now, the social science part has been changed a lot. And in fact, I think that we, this session is not the topic to this part these social aspects, this engagement of citizens that are it's all out of the scope <coughs> of what we did in previous projects. Okay. Okay, the objectives. Uh, just to have in mind here on the left, the main objective of, of this project is to catalyze the creation of the growth of existing energy communities and create new ones. Okay? With well, the leverage of the engagement of participants and so on, and also providing tools in the same case as, as, as communities for the management of the communities and to uh, at the trading and at an individual and a level. Okay? Rescue aims to increase the active participation of the members of these initiatives. Uh, also, as a new players in the in, in market and enhancing what well, is part of management and trading of facility, at least not the scope of the business. Okay. So there are several projects, there are technical projects, I will not go inside this, just so simply mention them at least because the project is much more wider than this user engagement and citizen engagement. So just mention that we have an integral architecture supported by the data model for the management of these energy communities and targeted interaction with facility markets. We are going to develop a suite of services dealing with this energy management within the community, but also to identify or to check if uh, an energy community could be a service provider, for example, for uh, a DSO, and also provide an open collaborative solution to access to individual and aggregated data. Okay? If we skip this, here we have the objectives all related to the session. Okay. We want to define and implement and validate an intergenerational training, transfers, and engagement programs for the dynamization of local energy communities. Maybe we don't understand this now, but we will see it later. Okay. And to increase individual awareness and responsiveness of the energy uses of the, of the energy to communication strategies. Okay. There are other objectives more related with the validation or both technical and engagement objectives. Okay. We we'll have this 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 purpose here. Okay. So a general vision of the project. The center of the project are the energy communities. And we are now focusing on the left part of the of the picture. Which are the resources <coughs> aiming to involve, considering the four pilots that are involved in the project, for a huge number of consumers. We have different strategies for, for this engagement, and this part of it, the international learning and transfer of knowledge that we will see in brief. Okay. All the technical tools are on the other side of the project, regarding the balancing, the forecasting tools, services for the shows regarding the grid and, and so on. Okay? 
An important aspect is the exploitation and replication. We don't want to only have these four pilots. And in fact, all of them provide potential replicability to the, in the coming future. Okay? Have four pilots, as we will see. So, again, the project focused on today's session on the left. Okay? We have the social engagement part with social science and humanities analysis. And this part of training, communication, and an existing platform for collaboration among the different members of the community. Okay? Uh, we are using these applications and services, coming or collecting or using data coming from the uh, energy communities infrastructures. The pilots we have, they are very heterogeneous. I, I, I was not going to go deep inside on this, but I will, and I will skip other slides that maybe are not so, so focused on education. We have four pilots, one in Girona, in Spain, one in Amsterdam, Athens, and Stockholm. They are very different natures in, in terms of energy community. For example, in the case of Girona, we have a supra municipal institution there. And I would like to add this with Gonzalo's comment about the importance of having municipalities involved in the in, in this kind of projects. I mean, it's not a matter of, of solutions, but also how you reach the path. They were they were saying or the regulations, the local policies that are necessary to carry out these initiatives. Okay, we have uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, Eastern Docklands, that is a district there. They have an energy tax community pilot, and here they are families, association of households, and uh, they also bring the, some issues that are having in the grid in terms of the uh, electric electric vehicle. Okay? But this is not the case in Girona, for example. There is another district. Uh, microgrid project in Estocolm that uh, is coming also from an uh, initiative from the municipality and we have an uh, energy cooperative in, in Athens, in fact two, in two places, in Athens and, and Latina, and it is also participating in the project. Mm, the project, and this is what we have been doing during these six months, mostly or in part, we have defined different business use cases, energy management, <coughs> community accessibility provider, that I was mentioning before, sizing and organization of the energy communities, and the fourth, that it is the scope of this, of this session, the social awareness and participation in the value proposition. Okay? We have 11 high level use cases, what we have called here. I will not go inside them. You will see that the, those refer to uh, engagement are those in the, in the red circle, okay? But they are not close, I mean, they are, they are related, okay? Also. Okay, these are the technical use cases, breaking the rules, and you see this, this slide again that they will be available after, the, after they get. They are basically related to energy managers, sort of management to increase the use of energy renewable resources, the interaction with the DSO, congestion avoidance, well, all these kind of things. Okay? There are some use cases related with policies. I will not go inside them, but they are somehow related with the pilot that we have in the project about what we were saying before especially for this public-private collaboration, the creation of energy communities, as it is occurring in, in Girona, for example. Okay? And yes, these are the four use cases that are related to it. Okay? The first one, I think, is the intergenerational engagement for community building at local state, or local state, sorry. And here, um, and somehow, if we face the title of the project, the name of the project, that is Red School, for us, the schools are the, one of the core or the catalyzers, as Conta was saying, in the creation of, of, the, of the future of potential community. 
it's okay. The second one is the citizen engagement for community building and total scale through card mitigation and rewarding. The third one is to create a collaboration platform that is already being used in Sweden, in the Paris pilot. And also there is a serious game for benchmarking communication with inclusion of rewards and having the data coming from this money test. Okay. Not, I will not go very deep inside, but here I would like to remind on this. In the consortium, we are fully convinced about uh, the potential contagion that the schools could have in senior people. I mean, the idea is that this, this, let's say, this engagement, if it is shown on the schools, in the training material there, in the teaching material that is in the schools, this is contribution to the to the families. Okay, it is. I know that sociologists I have to say this, but I think that in the last of primary school and the first year of secondary school, if it is this in, in the school, it is promoted to families and it is transfer of 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 engagement in this kind of initiatives. It has proved recycling. Mm -hmm. Our grandparents, they did not want to recycle. Okay. It was demonstrated that in the schools, this engagement about recycling arrived to the senior people, and the, the same thing wants to be done here. Okay. <coughs> okay. So at this point, the idea is in the case of Girona, we are trying to involve around 30 schools for doing this analysis, and the idea is to do the same in the, in the other three pilots. So we are talking about potential 100 schools for doing this analysis. I think this is also very relevant because, as I was saying, the topic they were asking for different for different social demographic places, and here it is what I also want to say, and also I agree with Gonzalo, that um, we have to focus on the person. So maybe personally in, in Sweden, we have different culture from the southern Europe, Greece, or Spain. And I think this this is this is relevant. This higher level use case is, is predominantly uh, performed by social actors. Okay? We have several aspective impacts there, all the quantitative data that is, will be used there for questionnaire surveys and so on. But, uh, moreover, the, the material that will be created will, be created will remain also in the schools for future use. Okay, okay. this is the, the creation of a gamification solution there. But I think that the most relevant thing, open to debate, is that we were saying, why do that? Here there are two things. I want that, and Kelly, and you. Kelly was saying that maybe it's not a matter of having a solution, but the requirements for that, the technology for not, as Otala was saying. <coughs> what about involving the actors in the co design of the tools that will be used? So the idea in this use case is to have these workshops, yes, but with the idea to have them involved in the co-creation and co-design of these gamification applications. Okay? The idea is to use it to, in, in, in the different pilots in press school, the students about 10, 12 years. Okay? So then, of course, here in the diagram, we will see that the idea of brainstorming there is organized these workshops for co-design with energy experts, policy makers, game developers, energy communities, and justice. But this is the impact, I will not go on this, you will have it available, but will enable many, many possibilities here. Okay? Regarding the other use case related with engagement is the platform I was mentioning before is an OLED light, which is an existing platform, but it is being used in the in Sweden, in this district, in 
first of all. And the idea is to well, inspire, educate, and motivate house associations to understand how they are using the they are using the, the energy, or um, well, uh, also interacting with some challenges or objectives that these houses associations could could have in mind. Okay? So they are having what well, identifying the actors and the tasks there. They have a job if it's a facility manager of a building and so on. The pains he may have, the gains that he may get, and the the uh, the solution of potential solutions to these problems based on other communities that have been with best practices or done before. This is the expected impact, or at least the, the figures they have in the current utilization of the, the platform. And here is the other serious game that it will be developed in the project. That uh, what it is intending is, <coughs> well, it's again also to engage, but also to be capable to modify the behavior from the from the users. This series game is using real data coming from the smart meters, and the idea is being capable to say, for example, why are you putting the washing machine at this time? Why don't you put it when the sun is providing some more generation in the TV panels that you have on the roof? And the idea is to check with this real data from the smart meters if it is really changing the way of doing it. Okay. Uh, okay, this is more so it's the, the, the same. They are putting leaderboards, rewards, challenges, and so on. Expecting to increase the engagement, educational also, and behavior change and positive habits. Uh, breaking the rules, I will not go on this. I think it's time enough. But the idea is that Red School is trying to support the existing policies in the clean energy package between deal and the power and the new energy market design. Okay. So the idea will have a specific work package in this. And about the impact, we were saying the famous case for the results. Let's come back to this in two years' time and see what we have done. I think it's better than today, but it is out of the scope of the meeting. Okay. We have then identified, but I think it will be too heavy for now. And all the target groups that could be second questions, but we are beginning six months. Okay, we have defined all the technical use cases, focus on the exploitation of, of the of the management of the, of the communities. This social analysis is fundamental for this engagement issues. Generational factor, political awareness, this community engagement in the game. The cooperation and co design process is very or is essential in our opinion. And we are having with enthusiastic participation at the moment of, of the people. Okay. And this is what we are supporting in implementing the policies. This is all about there. Thanks for coming out. We are uh, going to see a presentation of me and Liliana from the RIS, also. And, uh, well, I don't know if you me yet. He is an industry engineer with the Master in Industry 4.0. He has 18 years of experience in energy and construction, and he's currently project manager in the innovation department of MIW Energia Electricity Retailer and responsible for the Spanish file of the RIS. So, here it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you all for coming in coming after lunch. I agree, this is the tougher. Uh, I want to make you a brief presentation. I think it won't take more than 
I think, 10 or 12 minutes. Because this project has already been presented uh, by Q Technologies, that is our technology partner, this morning. And Anthony's, uh, the person who was presenting, has focused on the technology control and IP part of the demand response and flexibility actions that are being taken or are taking place in the four pilots of the project. So I'm going to focus more. Uh, I belong to the electric mobility that is uh, carrying, out, carrying out one of the pilots in the, in the, region, in the region of Murcia in Spain. So I will focus more on what we learn, what we see, and the path that we walk with our customers when we perform a pilot like this. In this case, the pilot of the risk is starting in October. So I will explain in general what is the case in this and other similar projects. Okay, this is our data, 36 months. This is a coordination and support action. So it's very important to take into consideration all that part of collaboration, learning, and setting the basis of deeper understanding of financial uh, issues of a regulatory framework and so on. We are 11 partners, and as I was saying, we have partner pilots in Turkey, well, in Spain, in France, and in Ireland, in Galway. Okay, and local flexibility is highly connected to energy communities and, them, and distributed energy resources. Our objective with this project is to eliminate the barriers that are hiding the access to, con to knowledge, understanding technology, understanding technology and funding for most of the consumers of the electric sectors as, as it is now. Okay, this is uh, our neighbor group. Our new, uh, this is our new group. Here uh, we have 26 buildings, around 1,200 uh, apartments uh, are uh, known in the, the, the neighborhood. 3,000 people live here. Uh, more, most of our apartments are three bedrooms, so there is a certain amount of homogeneity. We have collective self consumptions in two collective self consumption demands in different buildings. It is located in the, in the suburbs of the city of Mutu, which is the seventh city in size in Spain. It's uh, 40 kilometers away from the Mediterranean seaside. In total, for the risk, we are using uh, 18 apartments as uh, our pilot kits. The video is not working <laughs> very good. Just to make an idea of the, the size and the surroundings, you can see these modern buildings in the suburbs. Okay, there you go. The common household uh, is made up of young families with children. Uh, Women Energia considered this uh, neighborhood as our living lab. We have performed four European projects and one, that one more is about to start. In this new project about to start, the municipality of Murcia is going to be partnered as well because we have been increasing the scope of actions project after project. And in this final project, we are connecting this last one, we are connecting and energy for the first time with mobility, with urban planning, and so on. And this is why the municipality of Murcia is going to be a partner. For us, the average knowledge in the neighborhood of any, uh, of any householder uh, in the neighborhood about the electricity sector is significantly higher than the regional average. In part, the grade is, the grade is uh, for the near 100 homes 
that have already participated in this energy pro in these four energy projects and the flow of information by word of mouth in the neighborhood. Okay, the pilot and compassion activities uh, that belong to four different domains. Since, as I was saying this morning, have been explaining the technology for control part, the distributed energy resources part. We will focus more on the citizen part, user engagement and participatory funding, because in our project, we're making a ground lending campaign for funding one PD plan for self-consumption in the neighborhood. That would be the third, because as I said before, we have already two of them. Okay. <laughs> it is very trendy now to see everywhere the customer journey, and we wanted to explain what we perceive in the in our participants in the pilot, the house, uh, and the citizens. Uh, using the same structure, the same way. Because they are, they are undergoing a, a journey uh, as a participant or as a or as customer, that indeed they are our customers of electricity. Well, at the very beginning, we usually find a disconnected consumer. When I mean disconnected, I mean, uh, when I say disconnected, I mean disconnected in terms of information, not, not electrical or data disconnection. I mean that a consumer that is essentially blind towards electrical consumption. We refer to a mental disconnection for this information. Also, also there is a concern, let's say a fear for the bill, especially at time of rising prices, there is not an interest of understanding of something that seems to be too complex. Because many times we don't provide the citizen with the information in time, in a comprehensive way for them to understand what is the electrical behavior of his house. His or her house. Uh, many people <laughs> does not know what are the most consuming uh, appliances at home, for instance, in the context of a lack of total understanding of the electric consumption. The lack of, of, the lack of information favors strategies like, for instance, the fixed tariffs that can generate a false sense of stability and security. Many customers prefer uh, to have uh, for residential tariff fixed prices the same price per each kilowatt hour all the day, all the week, all the months, and all the years, or all the, all the year that last the con day contract with the people. Comparing, for instance, with the car, any citizen needs to sign gas supply contracts with annual duration at a fixed price per liter. And this is why the consumer, in this case, uh, the owner of the car, is able to manage with the variation of the market price of gas or diesel because he has the information he needs for taking his decision. On the contrary, we are looking for stable prices all the or maybe Let's say the disconnected consumer is looking for stable prices for all the year, for all the hour, because he cannot manage with the variation of, of prices of electricity in the market as he does, he does, or see with the variation of petrol or gas, diesel, the variation of prices in the market. Well, during the, the second stage, during the initial stage, the, we make the onboarding of uh, among our customers of the homes that are going to be part of the of the pilot. In this moment, uh, the process starts with uh, from the perspective of the user or the consumer, understanding primarily primarily two things. First of all, 
what are the most consuming appliances at their house and the most dispatchable because those are the laws that we are managing, we are monitoring and we are controlling in this house. The second thing that uh, the consumer starts to understand is the opportunity of taking advantage of time of use, time of self-consuming, time of cheap electricity, time of expensive electricity, and so on. Something as simple as that, understanding the way to take advantage of the hour, like uh, previously have been said, the hour that I am producing from my own PV plant on the roof, the hour that the electricity is cheaper, the hour that the electricity is more expensive, that change, of course, on a daily basis. All these things are the seed for all the company that comes after, like demand response, local flexibility market, maximization of consumption, and so on, use of batteries, etc., etc., etc. During the pilot phase, the access to information enables the gain of knowledge and awareness regarding technology. When understanding increases, acceptance grows. For instance, at the very beginning of we are studying uh, in a prior, uh, monitoring devices at home, there is uh, some of them are reluctant because they can consider we are spying them, they can consider uh, we are doing any bad use of the data we are getting, but indeed, nothing of that happened. And he managed to understand that once he get to know what is that sensor that we have to start doing. The end of the project of the pilot that can last for two years is, uh, has as a result, a user who is not only willing to assume an energy empowerment but enjoys it and is open to participate in actions that imply substantial changes in his behavior, such as belonging to energy communities, participating in P2P energy business, in investing their saving in crowdfunding crowd or crowdfunding campaigns, and many, many other uh, side effects, like you could say. Uh, the personal use here in blue. Once we get, once we then the app of the technology for controlling the house, we are uh, making our pilot of controlling the HVAC or whatever. But he's also using making his personal use case, learning, uh, controlling the machine, and so on. And once we end with the with the pilot and the devices and the control system and the app remain at the disposal of the user, he goes on with this personal use case. All of this is, is creating a security, empowerment, and willing to participate more and more. They become in the early adopter for, for energy measures. At the end, we have an informed and proactive consumer. At the same time, if 18 homes have participated, as I said before, each consumer becomes a disseminator of the message and more people, more and more people want to get involved in these actions. <coughs> and specifically, how are we doing it in the risk? The inner circle is the pilot. The middle circle cycle is the neighborhood, and the outer cycle is the country. In the inner Simple, we have the activities that take place during the pilot. We are testing dynamic tariffs, we are developing business models, we are making a technology toolkit for controlling, for monitoring, for knowing about what is happening in the house. We are making the ground lending campaigns, we are testing increasing demand response, and we are doing all this in 18 houses. Okay. As a primary effect, it permeates to all the neighborhood. In the neighborhood, in part, uh, thanks to all the projects, the, the four projects that have been developed there, it's been created the first local energy community in the city of Murcia. 
This lower energy community is benefited for the crowd lending campaign that we are making in the fire. But you see, the responsible for the crowd lending campaign are already negotiating to scale up the fire crowd lending campaign with the company responsible for that in the private risk for financing all their, their future assets. This is an example of a boost of the local energy community. In general, inform, more informed and aware consumers in the neighborhood. The house at the disposal new business model in this local energy community. And let's say the third level could be when the technology, the knowledge, the behavioral change, it not only thanks to, in, in our case, to our 18 houses and MIW Energia, but all the partners of the consortium, especially those located in Spain, e Crowd is the company for the crowd lending campaign, r 2 that is uh, the coordinator of the, the technology part of the project. We can, let's say, spread and expand explicit demand response as well consumer, and we go to the of explicit demand response, uh, crowdfunding campaigns, to put at disposal of many, many energy communities that are being created now, our local flexibility market platform. In general, a massive preference for the dynamic tariffs, that is the tariff that the more benefits to the user. And like I said before, we contribute to increase the empowerment of the consumer and to end this travel that is starting with some people, with, with a person that received the energy need with fear and total, uh, total misunderstanding of how and why this is the amount of money of the bill to a person that has is empowered and has the control of the energy decision. And just to end, this is our number, let's say, our KPIs in the four pilot rate cases that I have said. And the risk is a holistic solution to facilitate the adoption of local flexibility markets. More than 50% of consumer increase compared to the initial situation in each case study. 24% more of variable, variable renewable energy system hosting capacity through 100 gigawatts of flexibility unlock. All actors of the local flexibility markets value chain get a multi sided business model, the crowdfunding campaign, as a, a demonstrator, and more than 10 EU countries, because all the, uh, the consortium belong to 10 countries, get a regulatory analysis and recommendation roadmap for local flexibility markets. And that's all. Thank you very much.
the process of understanding. Anyone else can want to answer? Yes, Pastor. Correct, yes, but there is also the point of, I think there's two issues here which are very important. One is automatiz automatization. So, as someone mentioned that, if you got a bit a good automatic program, you don't need to care much about the device and the information. I think the information is very important to attract people and to get them involved into the energy management. And I think, in general, uh, we lack, as cost customers, lack information. A lot, lot, lot of concepts, even in, in that general organization. And the other thing is that the technology, the supportive technology of the system, this application, can also help you get involved in it if you get the right information. So if you get a good automatization automat automat system that avoid for you to get to have to use the, 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 the other supportive stuff such as they are, you are super relaxed about it. And as I mentioned before, you can always override the automatization. This is very important. The, the user at the end has to have full control of the system. This is the very important. So in that sense, the technology and the appliances, the, the applications can help getting people involved, controlling the, the not just the energy community, but you start with the own consumption, don't you? And then you just scale up to the to the group and to, to the audience. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. I think there is lots of different ways to understand technologies and how we frame them. So I think technologies is also uh, come with certain meaning. So it could be seen as uh, tools or as a, you know means to monitor, like visualize your consumption, which is very useful. But it can also create another way of an extra load in people's lives and an extra thing that they need to worry about. So. Aside from their assistance for, you know, of course, yes, we want technologies to be part of our lives, but we also need to understand whether in some way, especially now in the transition, and especially as we are moving to, towards automation, maybe technologies will stand back and we won't even notice them. But however, now we are in the stage that we are still noticing them. And uh, in some cases, there are even aesthetic objects like that we might not like seeing or maybe we like seeing more. So we need to understand not that just the technology as uh, something that relates directly to the energy transition as a, as a useful thing, but also as an object that enters people's lives and can upset a lot of different ways that they have established their real life. So I think... Uh, okay. Uh -huh. That we have uh, a question? Yeah, we have a question, and I think it's quite related to what you are discussing right now. Uh, the comment says that I was wondering how do we include or consider equity, diversity, and inclusion aspects in the context of the different pilots and proposed interventions? Wow. <laughs> well, uh, uh, maybe I can uh, narrow it down. Like, for instance, since we are talking about uh, the, the technology in the context of energy communities uh, and these automation or automatization processes that we're going through, um, it, it is uh, it's creating, it may create unintended negative impacts like uh, overload of uh, tasks and responsibility to information and so on. Also, but, it, it is, uh, as I think, a little already understood, but we are we, we may be left in out. Uh, energy itself is a complex issue, and if we add uh, the digital literacy, besides the energy literacy, to others and to be to be energy communities, uh, we may be left in out. For instance, the elderly women that not tend to use uh, technologies or use it less than men. Um, so people in, in, in a specific, uh, in some situations of uh, social vulnerability, for instance, and families in energy poverty and so on. So um, in, in your experience, how have you addressed this, uh, this kind of, uh, I would say limits, but I don't know, uh, also intended impacts or what are you left out in your, in your project? So how have you addressed this, this thing about with this technology tools, what or who you may be left out? Have you ever thought about it? <laughs> Sorry, but <laughs> I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Well, I think this is a difficult question. I guess that diversity or these differences between the members of one of the 
people who is participating is inherent. And this is why I think the commission asked directly that we have different pilots for different social demographic places. I mean, it's not the same Sweden and Spain in terms of equality in, in, in different aspects. And this is one thing. And, and the other thing, at least in the case of Girona, when we are asking for different schools, we are asking for, uh, we wanted at least to have at least 30, 30 schools for all the province of Girona. And this could be that there are schools from different neighborhoods, some of them not so, well, uh, maybe more vulnerable places than, than others. So somehow this is at least at the moment what I can say about uh, considering different, different diversity. Um, I, I think I addressed a bit this, this point during my presentation. I gave the example of some of the, of the activities that we are planning uh, to reach uh, different types of audiences. So we have this thing of the workshops that typically have the, the same profile of people. So I think uh, I cannot say the exact measures that we'll implement because it will depend uh, and we'll see as the project goes on. But uh, we do not, cannot restrict ourselves to one, uh, one engagement session, to uh, have one type of workshop or one inquiry, because we know that uh, uh, to have diversity, we need to reach out uh, to, to the people themselves. So we were talking about technology and uh, the importance of technology, but I think here in the engagement uh, part, there's a, a non-technological component that is very strong. Uh, because although we want people to know about energy, know about their energy consumption, so we need metering, etc., but to get them to start to, to see this and to learn this first step, I think is more a non-technological issue than a technological issue. So it's something that we'll try to address throughout the project, but it's something that we're definitely considering. And right now, uh, a direct answer is that uh, We'll try to do many different activities and uh, we'll see what are the target groups and how we can interact with each one of these target groups. It's a question of statistics and profiling. And yeah, you, can, you can look at it this way too. So the sample has to be representative of the population. We could call that option there. So you have to make sure all the profiles that you create or at least all the characteristics of all the archives has to be represented somehow. How you do it is uh, another matter. But the sample has to be representative of the population. Profiling is a way to do it, and then you just use other techniques that to make sure this is not. I can add something this as well. Because I think for us it was the idea of mapping the diversity is one thing, so recruitment can address this, the profile can address this. But in inclusivity is a different issue because inclusivity is about not how you know that you have those different profiles of people, it's what you do about it. And we started, it was very hard. It's not, there's not an easy thing to do, I think, for designing technologies to be inclusive and because there's so, especially with three different pilots. So I think the first way we started to address it a little bit was the language. The language, not in terms of you know, different languages, but actually how we address people. And I think your presentation was a really good uh, reminder that the user is a he, and it, it's not a he, and it could be addressed with they, or it could be a more neutral way to talk about it. But also it's another way of who are you talking to? You need to think when you work on a technology or on an interface, especially this idea of the, the kind of platform, for example, we design, how do we talk to people? What kind of language are we using? Are we demanding things? Because uh, some of our partners in our group are address the idea that we are commanding people, but perhaps we should ask them, do you want to do this? And we is this also on the break, but it's, it's just how do we do that? In what way are we using this interface to interact with people's lives? So I think the aspect of inclusivity is even more important than this, the diversity. Because we can map the million profiles, but still need to. But this is a problem with cooperation and living labs. Mm -hmm. Because who approach and who are active, and I have to focus groups. How do you manage to get someone that is really. So that person in the corner that is 
quite all the time, maybe have some very interesting issues to say. So you have to make sure you get all this information from all subjects or persons. So, and this is what you do with them. So this is with, with um, all these techniques that in theory are very good and very useful, but you have to make sure that everyone is in there and has to say. Mm, I think well, the yeah. <laughs> question there was a lot of challenges. And in the presentation, you mentioned something very important: is the age data, the the age of the people that is uh, uh, again, that's very important uh, for understanding that it's not the same. If you are a certain age, have a different relation with the technology, and another age, and it uh, of course modulates the, the the way you are going to use it. But if it comes exclusively to inclusivity, I think here we have to, to make all a reflection in the sense that we are um, inclusivity regarding uh, visual impairment, uh, auditive impairment, cognitive uh, disabilities, and we are uh, the resources that we have so far, pictograms, uh, Voice over on this on the smartphone, and so I'm not in the 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 interface that we the interface that we need to have to make a real inclusive to be able to provide the message in different by different media by different levels of complexity and so on and so far and I think. We are not uh, being able to address that. We are we're considering uh, inclusivity in a, in a low way. Yeah, it is hard. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is hard, but uh, we are not using processing natural language. Many things that would make things Alexa uses it. We don't. So we have things to do. <laughs> Um, and my question uh, that's quite related to this topic that I have is like, um, we have, uh, again, we are, uh, I mean, from TRASA, for instance, I won't, I won't generalize saying all so, from the social science, but at least from TRASA, was where I work, uh, where I go to other works as well. Um, we, are, uh, we have sort of a critic view of, of this, of this project, uh, the area communities tend to focus a lot in the technology tools and technology development. So. Uh, and we saw a lot of the engagement activities that we, uh, that we saw today, that we shared today, were about uh, some sort of creation of a design process for technological solutions for energy communities. Mm, that, that again, maybe really sort of uh, we are not restrictive. I mean, it could be a way to move towards an scale, uh, towards an energy community as you said, after, but it can be also, could, could be a trap. Uh, Thinking about energy communities, but this the where I'm going to with all this is like if you and Eliki, which was uh, something that I, a question that I have after your presentation was if you could go over uh, your recommendation about not only uh, work uh, in engagement activities for the design of tools, but also for the understanding of the problems, if you, especially for friends that are meeting. Yeah, that's the problem. We never start from that. We can, it comes as, a, as an afterthought. And although we might know it as like maybe a recess is all okay, we don't know what the problem is, we never really ask that. Because I think that's a matter also of uh, confidence. Like I think a lot of you mentioned how we need to establish trust in the community. And if you turn up on a community and say, Can you tell me what the problems are in your community or in, in uh, you know your relation? They will say, well, you don't know. You don't know anything about this. Why are you asking us? So it's like sort of this idea of some kind of level of expertise. So you have to be initially to, to establish the trust so that people understand that there's something to offer or how you, and then you can kind of go back into different circles, I think, of discovering how you can re readjust, how you can really find maybe some of the problems. But because, yes, you're right, a lot of the projects we work on always involve the technology. We very rarely do projects that do not involve the technology. So it will be only about, for example, the social dynamics of energy communities without necessarily developing a tool. 
that would be great. I think I would really like to be on one of these projects. But uh, I think because we do have the technology, we have to also um, use it as a way to inform the conversation. So, yeah, I don't know if I'm answering. I don't know if, <laughs> if you guys have to ask. Uh, we, we were talking again here about the, the learning, right, uh, capacity building uh, with citizens. And I, I believe one thing, at least from the experience I have, and when we go to more rural areas, uh, we have this feedback that uh, people say, oh, the people from the city come and try to teach us things because they, just because they are from the city, they think they know better. So trust is, is a big issue here. And I think how we can address it is with peer-to-peer -peer learning. Uh, so we, we uh, pick a person that has a, a very high interest on the topic and is very available to know more. We teach some things to that person and then that person will teach his own community. And that's one way I think we can address this. Uh, at this topic, we can have this capacity building and we can build trust with people because more easily they will trust their neighbor than they will trust us. Okay. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> well, this is part of the internet because they're going to listen to you. Okay. Any website. Uh, so, first of all, thanks for you for, for the presentation and also for the clearness on accepting. Sometimes in the projects, we are not facing them as maybe as they should. Okay? In terms of in the uh, big console in the project that I'm, I'm participating, actually what, that's one of the advantages that we don't have any technology there. And we are just looking at what will be necessary, actually not for us, but for the ones that they will be interested on promoting that. That's why the focus of the project is more on local agencies, municipalities, any type of group that they want to promote those kind of, of, of initiatives. On the other hand, at the end, you need type of tools as well. I mean, but you will look for them in the other way around. So what do we need from everything that it was promoted and and produced? So there my question, and we, we have discussed it before, it's is there I mean are you considering that in an energy community people want to participate in a different way? So in some cases they want to be proactive, so they want to be in the meetings and then also they want to use the apps. But are you also considering just people that they want to be part of the initiative, but they want to know nothing about that. So more kind of automatic ways of doing that and the combination of both. So are in your projects this kind of both ways? I do it proactively, but also I do it more kind of, you know, backside, I sign something, they play with my data or with my energy and that's it. So does any of you want to answer? I will start and then you can go out. But yes, we did talk about this. And I think it's uh, people, some, uh, this idea of empowerment that is used a lot as a word. And I don't really know if I, it can be understood in different ways. And the way people participate are different and it varies across the length of the project. or their own lifetime of the community. But, and, and you're right, some people want to be part of the, the organization of the community or the, the conversations, they want to know what's going on, but they don't want to do things actively because either they, it's not that they don't want, they might not be able to. And other people might not even be physically able to, to do things. So I think, reflecting on that, I, I don't know what's the answer, but I think there are different roles within communities. And, and a good way would be that a community maybe identifies this and say, okay, we we don't have, uh, I don't know, all, not all of our citizens can be so active or do or proactive or in the conversation or maybe actively changing everything. But if a, a certain number of us take on the leadership and it's again this idea of role models of ambassadors or trusted uh, figures, I think it kind of helps in the long term. I don't know if it is if in the in the timeline of a project it would be visible, but if you're talking about long-term building of communities, I think it's nice to know that people can perform different things and perhaps they inspire and kind of become the next step or you know through the schools, for example, it's the generational thing. So it's if change for change to happen is not a very it's a slow process and affects a lot of different 
pictures in society. So I think it's just this idea that we could all do, perhaps uh, uh, maybe even compose something that relate to communities that you don't have to be that active person. You don't have to do 10 different things. You could just do a little bit because it still helps in the building of that. So, I, I know for a fact that in, in, in the, the I know for a fact that in the case of the Lacan Festival, there are some participants that they, they just will sign the community, but they won't even get That's fine. They, they, don't, they don't have any interest in being proactive. It's like this, as you mentioned, the automation, automation, and stuff like that. Uh, okay, we need the community, that's fine, but uh, please don't ask me constantly to meetings, to be alert about my energy consumption and everything. So, yes, that figure exists. I know for about this is. And I think it's good in this because it will be my case, for example. I don't want to be constantly bothered or having to spend time, extra time, with another fact of my life. So, it's, I think it's perfectly reasonable and it's a good question. I think, well, I don't have a, an answer, a specific answer. I guess that a couple of years ago there was a topic that it was addressing to identify the factors what brings people to become part of a, an energy community. It was not technological. I think this is also changing. Mm -hmm. uh, five years ago it was difficult to find projects where sociologists and, and yeah. humanities partners were in the consortium. Now we cannot think in a consortium with, without them. And I think this is good. And regarding the roles, I also agree we have different roles. In, in our case, we were in some meetings in, in a specific municipality, and well, it's a small town. We are maybe talking about three thousand people. And they were, they were the, the, the people in the town hall. They were saying they were really like an activist because they were really interested. It was a small place. It was uh, a village. And the one who were there were really thinking in, in this question, people rather than the, the savings that they were getting economically, for example. But it is difficult to extrapolate and say that everyone is like that. Because for sure that there will be people that they do not want to be proactive, but they want to be in the community. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is difficult for me to say. Uh, I can also answer for, from a more technical point of view. Uh, so, in our project, and uh, it's the same with Roberto and the same with Alfonso for uh, Masterpiece, because we are all from the same call, one of the requirements from the call was that all the tools must have some kind of automatic uh, way of working. Was, this was written in the text of the call. So, in our case, our tools are mostly built thinking on B2B, uh, and this, for example, in Portugal, uh, all the communities must have a community manager. So this community manager can either be an individual or a company, but it's something that someone that needs to have some kind of uh, needs to be an active member. That person, either if it is a company or a, or a person, this person needs to be active. But all the other persons can rely on this single person and uh, just say. We were talking before about the peer-to-peer, the -peer. for example, it's, uh, we see peer-to-peer -peer a lot with these apps where people say, I want to sell uh, this part of my energy to that neighbor and then tomorrow I need to go there again and say, no, uh, that's not the way we thought about it. it was, uh, okay, people just say, okay, I want to participate in that, I'll gain some advantage, so it makes sense, I'll participate, but then we don't want to give... Uh, a lot of trouble to the people to go there. If they want to, to go and see how the energy is being managed, they will be able to. But if they don't want to, that will be automatically and they receive their energy bill at the end of the month, just as they are receiving right now. I was thinking, well, hearing you, that of course we have, when we make a pilot, we sometimes make a bias. And our neighbor. In our case, people willing to participate have some of several characteristics for environmental reasons, for being native early adopters of whatever, for being a family that uh, 
where the energy bill is an effort to be paid. When we contact the families to be part of a project, if they are not uh, concerned about the 100, 200 euro of electricity is the same for them, they are not in this. If they maybe feel that, uh, for many other reasons, but once we have those that are minimal, uh, minimally interested, then we'll appear all these roles that you are making. You are mentioned, and of course, we need the leaders that are uh, willing to put a lot of effort to lead the community and will be the follower in the community. But even that follower, for deciding to be part of the community, for taking an informative decision, need to have a certain amount of information, also minimal. He doesn't need, she doesn't need, they doesn't they don't need to be updated constantly with information, but at least. This family needs to know something about the energy market and what they can do. Just that. I, I was, okay. Yes, as, I was going to ask the, uh, uh, an experience from Manzanares, which is um, the Manza 50 50 program in the school. Um, this, 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 this program is about. Uh, Kids uh, and teachers need to be need to change their behavior. They need to consume less energy, and this will tra will translate into less uh, uh, to lower bills. Okay, so this this savings from these lower bills will be reinvested in the school. Um, for that, obviously, there, there will be a, 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 some sort of technical solution, for instance, platform that will have uh, uh, processing of this data and so on. However, this platform is. In the, in the, it's being developed right now, it's not being working. But kids have, uh, that are already in this program, and teachers that are already in this program, are, have become aware of their energy behaviors and patterns with the students. They have started changing their behaviors, things like turning off the lights and so on. They have already done that before even having that technology working. So it's uh, so giving them this idea of, of uh, become aware of energy, your energy consumption, why, and it could have some expected rewards. So, so it has changed because already had an impact on these kids and the school before you can interact with the technology too. So I don't know if could be a way as well. I will Miguel uh, I've been in some of the projects that uh, he mentioned in that uh, neighborhood. So, of course, we understand that there are different roles and uh, you cannot push too much certain users because otherwise they will leave the project. That's true. That's why uh, for the co-creation activities that we have performed in several of the projects, we just uh, pick a focus group, the ones that are more active, and they are the ones that are really, you know, into the, you know, the workshop, into the meetings, into these co-creation activities. Basically, if you got 50 users, just having a co-creation workshop with 50 users is impossible. You won't get any, any, any outcome because that too, too, uh, is too messy. And of course, you are bothering some of the users. Of course, you have to inform. You have to tell them what the project is about. Uh, what are the outcomes? What are we going to do with the performing the houses, the buildings? But just yes, of course, we pick several ones just to have this focus. Okay. Okay. About this, uh, the energy reduction of this school has been done through common sense, or have you been telling them what you have to do? Common sense. Okay. Common sense what? <laughs> At least for these kids. <laughs> oh, it's important because sometimes you get the question of people don't know whether they are doing things wrong and they don't have common sense. So you have to inform them what is they are doing, what can be improved. Obviously they have, they don't, they, we don't know yet uh, the impact of the measures okay. they have taken, okay? I mean, in terms of the, how they have reduced their bills and so on. Yes, they are already doing something, so yeah. Because they have an incentive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, we are getting Oh, sir. I was sorry. No. <laughs> I was going to have I have a question for you. With this gamification, what is yes. I am struggling because for you are just thinking about what to do. Yeah. What is more or less the plan? I, I think it's very risky. In chat. For internet, yeah, sorry. Yeah, how, how do you design something? I have to say that this is known by, by the University of Utrecht mm -hmm. on the one hand, and third, that is a research center. <laughs> yeah. So, in, in Utrecht, the, their idea is to create a, an app that extracts the collects the data from the smart meters directly, mm -hmm. and with this information, they want. But the, the, their idea is to be able to modify or at least try to to change the behavior somehow in the in the use of energy that the members of the community are doing in these states. For example, if they have installed some PVs in whatever, mm. and they are usually put in the dishwasher or what I have, and the, the, the rain, at least, is trying to say, you are doing this, mm -hmm. now that it's sunny, why don't you change it? And instead of putting your dishwasher this time, do it at the other and make some benchmarking with some other users that have done that and the savings could be this, maybe as an incentive or rewards on their way of doing yeah. This is what I think. Yeah, yeah. They, they want to do. Now, it, it's, it's very tricky because it can be reinforcement through social reinforcement or economic reinforcement. But they uh, will have this in you know, the place and um, very careful with the, not the notification, with the competitive thing because people don't want to compete really. Yeah. And certainly, also certainly you know, with the neighbors, with the people you are, this is very difficult. We, we found exactly the same because we, we had an element of gamification, or at least our, you know, our platform had that, and we found out in all our pilots that people want to know what their neighbors are doing, but they don't want to compete with them. <laughs> and certainly not to create this tension in the community, even if they do think a little bit like, oh, yeah, maybe, you know. It can be, counter, it can be counterproductive, actually. This yeah. is, this so is very careful with gamification and competitive games. That's our And it's, it's also the long-term life. It kind of works with maybe certain uh, citizen group or ages that you know they might like this idea of reward like stick and carrot, you know. What? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't work with everyone again, and it's it, it is yes maybe I think it's a combination. We can't deny it because of course it it works with some way in some ways like for example financial incentives. It's the first step that people use this idea of economic benefit. But actually, economic benefit, like you said, we also found out that it was something like people would say 50 euros. So, you know, <laughs> who cares? In the end? Like, I mean, unless you are in a very, very difficult position, you're not going to have this as your main reason for doing everything, which is a lot of work sometimes. Because when you say, oh, you can put your washing machine at the, I don't know, in the middle of the night, or you could, it's not as easy as uh, it sounds, because of course we have devices that are programmable, but there's still the manual thing of who does it, how it's done, and how, what is before and after. So there's a lot of coordination, and I think gamification might complicate things as well sometimes, but it's all an experiment right now. <laughs> yes, the other strategy, if it's not based on, on smart meters and so on, and they want to see that this is one of the solutions coming from from Udre. Third, on the other hand, they want it is more oriented to educate in the sense of coming from real uh, situations in the energy community to propose challenges and to try to address user in how to achieve yeah. these these challenges. Yeah. Pro, but coming from real experiences in some communities. So they are learning or being educated in awareness and, and so on. This is the other perspective of that. I, I don't know whether you remember the third web pages that have uh, all sorts of things like flashing images, uh, changing videos, overloading the information, 
But sometimes what happens to us is that just because we have the technology and the tools, we want to use them. Sometimes we don't need to use all the resources we have. We just don't need to because we have certain capacities that we are, as humans, we are the way we are. So just overloading people with demands and different tools is counterproductive. Sometimes it's keep it simple, but it's just it's keep it simple. We have to research, of course, and maybe find, okay, this is not the right way, we cut it, perfect. But sometimes we get overexcited <laughs> with, the, with the tools and the resources we have in the radius, and we just go off with each other. Do you have a question? Anyone else? Yeah? I'm sorry, I didn't see it. <laughs> Maybe with my voice is enough. Okay, it's fine. Okay. Okay. I was thinking about this competition that maybe it's not competing against one another, but uh, against other things. So like shutting down a nuclear power plant, for instance, or achieving community goals. So maybe instead of thinking, because I think this mindset, and this basic component, I think, but I don't think this is a problem of facts. I think it's a problem of how, to an extent, the European Commission or Western countries see the problems to the world. It's a problem of individualization. Yeah. So if you think of, of, of people, so they are growing their responsible lives for their health, so they need to be aware and educated for their health about safety problems, about buildings, materials, recycling, uh, all the brands that they are buying, the mass check that they are we, so, so this is crazy, guys. I mean, so I understand that they say, you know, go, go elsewhere because I'm fed up with that. But I think this is difficult for projects to find back because if you go with this narrative in your proposal, this wouldn't fit the logic of the of the funders. I don't know your views about that. I'd love to hear your views about that. If you said that you are going to say exactly the opposite, not educating, not raising awareness, but just being invisible for them while achieving the goal that we are trying to achieve, that is the conversation. I don't know what you think. Does anyone want to come in with me? Uh, yeah, thank, thanks, Marvin. I think it's, yes, I, I agree. It's, it's a, a whole idea of you know, liberal politics, isn't it? Everything now has become this kind of centralized, becoming responsibility of people. And you're right, I think we are being pushed to be responsible for so many different aspects of our lives that in the end, the mix, and I think uh, Gonzalez said before that it's all great, but without also some kind of core policies or some, uh, you know, responsibility from the wider uh, infrastructure and society that we live in, it's important. But I, I like this idea that you mentioned, the, the reframing of gamification, the idea that yes, we can actually use that tool to turn things around and say, because communities have some kind of form of agreement in, in what's good for them, yeah? They might, and I think it's easier to define than individual homes. Because if we sit down and think, okay, we have 20 homes or 30 homes here, and we have a, a community, what would we like to achieve, and maybe we can be easier to find actually something that is a, um, a common goal, and maybe that's how we can turn around this idea of that do your best, but not just for say you know ten euros or whatever it is, but that maybe because you're helping something. As we did have a workshop in one of our pilots in the Netherlands, and people we try to also ask people why they think it's important, and if they will be participating into this idea of uh, generating community energy, because that was our use case to release energy in a, in a community battery. And of course, in the beginning, you start with, yeah, what if I do it and the neighbor doesn't do it? What <laughs> and you start from that, and that's normal, it happens. But then later, as we followed the process and asked people, and they, they said, well, in the, in the end, it's nice to know that we are contributing to something larger than us, our own home maybe, but even if it's small, perhaps we want to know we move to this house to have a better life, but if this can contribute to, you know, a bigger purpose also, that's great. But the unfortunate reality is that still people do not want to sacrifice their own comfort and convenience many times, which comes in the way of this 
common goals. So the first is about me having my nice home, clean home, convenient home, and then I moved to Unfortunately, it's just we've forgotten that, you know, these common goals might be more important sometimes, but... Okay. Um, I mean, we are reaching the, um, already the, the, the end hour of 5.30, so... Um, uh, I would like to thank uh, very much attendees of the three <coughs> centers. Uh, and yes, I, I would like to use this topic as a close in the market. Um, and it, this, this thing about technologies, they are necessary right now because of the world we're living now, but it, is, it seems like important, seems, I don't know, it seems like important to not lose sight in, in the context of energy communities that at the end they are tools. And uh, to fight climate change, to, to achieve this uh, uh, ecological and social fair transitions, uh, we need to go beyond these individual uh, narratives. Uh, I'm thinking a little broader, maybe including these other agents and public policies and so on. So let's just let's keep that in mind, if you are allowed to say that. And for it, I'm grateful for this space because. To think uh, what I celebrate from this space that we are not only in, in, in a consortium but in, in spaces like this where the engineering mindsets and other <coughs> social science mindset could exchange ideas and views is useful and, and necessary as well. So, thank you. Thank you.